I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Please be, be seated. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of St. Paul's Episcopal Church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I come before you in the name of our triune God, representing our people and those who love the Lord. And I got to tell you that saying from our psalm reminds me of not my Episcopal background, but my grandfather on my mother's side's background in the Baptist church. They would always say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. And they would also say, guess what? You got it right today. Everybody who is sitting here, you got it right because we are, we are commanded to come in community, to come and worship and honor God together. That's what it means. And those of you who are online, you got it right. Because we are called together to not only edify by the word of the Lord, but also to encourage one another. That's why we worship in community. We are also called to rejoice. That's what it means to be glad. We are in a season of joyousness, and we are in a season of comfort and peace. We are in a season of waiting, and all of you have gotten it right. In our gospel reading today, we are in the gospel according to Matthew, and something about Matthew that is distinguished between that gospel and the others is that Matthew depicts Jesus as a teacher more than anything else. And in our gospel today, we are actually getting the prophetic word of Jesus saying that the coming of the Son of Man is near. He is also saying to us that we should be in preparation. And like good followers of Jesus, his disciples say, ask, when? When, Lord? When is the Messiah coming into its power? And, you know, Jesus replies, no one knows what, the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, but you are to be vigilant. And he likens this unexpectedness to the great flood of Noah. We know what happened to those people, right? And he also likens it to a thief that comes in the night, he says that if the owner of the house knew the hour when the thief would come, then the house owner would be there waiting. Now, that is not Jesus telling us that we are to be caught off guard. He's saying the opposite. He says, be prepared, be vigilant. This is your time to wait on the Lord. This is our opportunity to wait on him. Now today, and I got to share this, uh, Mother Pauline, we had a conversation, and I thought today was first Sunday. <laughs> and guess what? It is, it is the first Sunday of Advent, but it is actually the last Sunday. So what that means is that we are in a time, we are in an alpha and an omega time, the beginning and the end. Do you realize that? Or better yet, we are in the omega, awaiting our new beginning. We are also, do y'all feel this weather out here? It's a tad bit warm, but it's letting us know that we are a few months away from winter. So we are coming to the end of the fall season into the winter time. And I will let you guys know I have a few days left, hallelujah, of my school semester. I am almost at the end, but I am approaching the beginning of a new semester. And some of you guys have budget proposals that you have at work to turn in before the new year. Or maybe your family is thinking about looking for vacations or for Cyber Monday for the summer. 
because you're in preparation for the new year. Or, or maybe, maybe you're thinking about your resolutions. Or maybe you are that individual who's going to put together a vision board because you want things to change in your life, right? We are coming to the end in hopes of a new beginning. But like the disciples, how do we wait? Those answers are in the Old Testament because Matthew not only depicted Jesus as a teacher, but that gospel is grounded on Jesus himself saying, I did not come here to abolish the law and the prophets, but I came here not to abolish but to fulfill the prophecy. Our Alpha and our Omega, what do we do? In Isaiah, in chapter 20, as, forgive me, in Isaiah that we're reading, verses 1 through 5, we are taught that the arbiter, our judge, God, is calling us to take the sword and pound it into a plow spear. That is, a, that is the blade of the plow. And God is asking us to not cut flesh anymore, but to cut the land and cultivate it because growth is coming abundantly. Our God is asking us in Isaiah to take the spear and make it a pruning hook. Now, pruning hooks are not to cut the grapes. Pruning hooks are to cut off what is dead and what is extra so that not only you can grow, but that you can thrive in your growth. This is a time when Isaiah is saying to the people of Israel, coming from the Song of Zion, that study war no more. That is your Advent season. Even though you are the same people that have been summoned to fight during Advent, take peace. This is your time to wait. It also says in Hebrews in the translation that when you are to wait on God, the coming of our salvation, the Messiah, that you are to seek Yahweh's light. The Hebrew translation is the light. Do you know that in our colic today, if you look back at it or not, we heard it again in Romans in our New Testament, that not only we're we supposed to not study war no more, but we're supposed to put on the armor of light. Advent is a time to cast away the darkness and gird yourself with the light. Where is that light? It's inside of you. How do you put on this armor? Well, first you have to make the decision like the, old, the young people say, stop throwing shade and say some encouraging words to one another. Smile at someone. Go out of your way to speak to a stranger. Your light cannot come out if you do not open up. You can also be silent and listen intently. One of the selfless things that we can ever do and shine light on a person is to let them speak. And then let them know that you heard them. That's shining your light. You can also give what you can, not just in money, because we are in a stewardship of joyful and generous giving, but also in your time. These beautiful young people that we have here, look at them and give them your time. Shine your light on them, because when you shine the light in front of others, you cast a pathway that will lead you in the right direction the direction that we wait for. It's the same light that the wise men followed to find the Messiah. It is the same light 
that the shepherd, men of the field, hard workers, use to find the Messiah. It is the light that is inside of you during this time. And please understand, just as Jesus said, be vigilant. Understand that it's coming sooner than you think. It is going to be sudden. Be prepared. Shine your light. This is your time to wait in peace and joy. Amen.